You are listening to the Nightly News Podcast, the voice of the night. Welcome, everybody, to the Nightly News Podcast. This is Professor Paul Miller, and I am so honored to be joined here on our last podcast of the term with one of our favorite guests, Knights Athletic Director Casey Hicks. Casey, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Paul. You know I love being here. And we love to have you. And, of course, we also love to have Nightly News President Abby Bresky. Abby, welcome back to the show in your own right. Thank you. Don't sound so excited. (laughs) Thank you. So one of the things that we wanted to talk about today, this is... This is a really good point to kind of not only reflect, but preview. This is sort of, for lack of a better term, a soft spot in the Mm -hmm. annual schedule of athletics as baseball just finished up and we are getting ready for the wonderful soccer season that will begin here in August. So uh, that's really what we're going to talk about today. All right, so we're going to start off at the top and obviously it's, and and I I know that we just had recently uh, Kevon and Dalton on the podcast to sort of relive the Knights baseball season, but you know, I would love to hear your perspective about this ESAC championship, you know, run that that the guys went on, and really just a unbelievably dynamic end of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, I, I shared with the gentlemen they, they got started off slow, but the run they went on at the end of the season was was much like the season before. Yeah, and uh, and I would love to hear not only your thoughts about how the season ended, but but that ESAC championship game is one for the books. There's yeah. no question. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, it's funny at the at the end of baseball season, a couple of the guys would would trickle through my office, you know, excited about the championship game. And I'm always teaching a bigger lesson because the past two seasons, like you just mentioned, have have looked similar. And when we're able to string together a couple of those games in the middle of the season, we're making the, the USCA Small College World Series. So hopefully that's a goal for, for the upcoming 2025 season. But, you know, pulling it together at the end of the season and being able to grab the number one spot and host um, the ESAC championship at FNB was really, really special. FNB is an electric place to play um, at this level. So to be able to host Williamson Trade there was was amazing. And the, the game itself, I mean, you can't even say enough good things about it. It was one of the most exciting baseball games I've ever been a part of. Um, and the, you know, the walk off, the walk off run, you, you draw it up like that in books. Um, so I'm really happy for the seniors specifically that, you know, that's the way that they were the able to end seniors. seven seniors and, and seven seniors who honestly have been here for three, four, some of them five years through COVID, um, and have been a big part of the growth of this program. So for them to be able to finish their careers on such a memorable game and bring home the the ESAC title is really special. And that's something they're going to tell their kids about in 25 years. And Not just tell, show, because the video <laughs> will right. still be that there. That is right, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things, and I know I shared this on our last podcast with Kevon and Dalton, but... You know, as I think back, and I actually, something very interesting that anyone out there can check out, I've I've grouped all of the different seasons together in playlists. So if you go to youtube.com slash at Nightly News CPC, you can go to our playlist page and and go season by season and see all all of them collected. Um, We've done almost 100 games, baseball only, and for the first time ever, I'm 100 games under my belt right mm-hmm. just doing nights baseball mm-hmm. for the first time ever in my life i when we were at a, a brief break i look over at steve and i said i hope i sound okay because i am so nervous right <laughs> now for these guys like uh. so in the game and gosh i will never forget those you know the bottom of the eighth with owen zell tying up the game with a clutch hit mm-hmm. and of course tanner mccoy walking off in the bottom of the ninth i mean i hope my call does did, did those plays justice because gosh I, I didn't have a voice the next day, but <laughs> but uh, gosh, and, and again, if you haven't had the chance to relive this event, I do encourage you to go back to our YouTube channel because it yeah. was it was the best game I've ever been a part of. Definitely. And again, I don't mean to slight any former player, but I can't honestly remember a game with that many twists and turns, mm-hmm. back and forth, and then a bottom yeah. of the ninth walk off. Yeah. In addition, it's just. 
no. uh, what more can you say? Yeah, it was the drama of the game, and, and Zach Boyer came in big there at the end um, to shut them down on on the mound, and it was special. It was it was really fun to be a part of. It's funny you mentioned you were nervous because I don't get nervous, and that day I was pacing up and back and forth up in the press box, and I had I was nervous. I don't know what it was, but since you were feeling it too, maybe it was just the excitement of getting where we where we were. The only time I really ever get nervous is on the first game of the season. It's, it has nothing to do with me. It's just, is all this equipment going to work? Are we actually yeah, going to sure. be broadcasting? Yeah. Is everything going to go well? Technology is bittersweet. I think that's where I was because I was, you know, like trying to not miss any moments that someone was going to want to remember. Mm. Like taking pictures. I was like, Abby, you can't mess this up <laughs> now. And then trying to do, get myself replaying that, that hit in the back of my head. And I'm mm. like, oh. We're just going to try our best <laughs> well, together. And, and I do want to talk, Abby, about the uh, season that you had. Uh, you were such a, you've been such a huge asset to athletics over the past you know year, year and a half. And what you were able to do is not only were you the photographer, you were also you know, helping me produce like, hey, uh, my battery is about to die. Can you go plug this <laughs> in for me type of thing? But then, of course, you were also our post-game interviewer and to just talk not only just about like if you want to talk about the ESAC championship game first, that's fine. But more about like what were your experiences from the season? And what were some of the things like that you showed growth on or that you enjoyed? Especially starting from like the three games I did last year to this year, I've definitely become more comfortable in just owning what I know. Because I think last year I kind of froze a little bit. But I think through getting to know some of them and kind of getting comfortable in that position, it's just the confidence that I see in myself now. And then with photo, it's that ability to learn something new because I haven't done that before. So and being able to capture those moments that, you know, I remember as an athlete for other people to have those as memories is amazing. One quote that has always sort of resonated with me is it's something along the lines of the first part of any marathon is the first step. And so anytime I talk to you about your growth and, and trying to help you have more faith and confidence in yourself. That's what it was. You know, even the, some of the struggle that we had during basketball, you know, you, you kind of focused that internally. Like it was something that you were doing. And I kept yeah. telling you, look, yeah. it's just these stupid lights in here. It's not your fault. It's difficult for anyone to take photos under these circumstances. And then what happened the first time you took photo for baseball under natural light, mm -hmm. go figure, mm -hmm. they were great. Right. And, and, you know, obviously I know that one of the things that, that you and, and certainly others have, have dealt with is Dylan did this for such a long time and, and yeah. it has, has, you know, won awards and things like that. Yeah. Listen, you, your photos stand right up there with his. I There's no that. question about that. And I guess what my final question in terms of this before we, you know, kind of move on, Abby, is what do you think, like, do you feel that you're, you've improved as a photographer throughout this whole process? I think so. I think for baseball, it was a little bit easier for me because I can kind of anticipate things more often than I can basketball. It's not to say it's like it's slowed down a little bit, but basketball, it's constant. And you're kind of always in like their, not their way, but you're always kind of. You're on the floor you're, versus being you're in the on your, You're on your toes, yeah. So I think baseball, I know more and I'm more knowledgeable of what to expect. So I think I, I would still have to practice for basketball, but I think overall, I, I'm, I don't know. Well, you're still invited. <laughs> so even when you're done here, we will gl be glad to have you back. But yes, right. definitely a hard follow up for Dylan. I, I warned, I warned the athletes. <laughs> I did. I was like, I don't, I'm not promising anything, but I'm trying my best. The well, work that you did is exemplary. It, it is. is. And Thank the you. next person's going to say the same thing about following in Abby's footsteps. <laughs> so don't you worry. So again, congratulations to the Knights this year for taking home back-to-back -back yeah. ESAC championships, setting school record for victories, home victories. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're just, you know, there's a litany of things that, that they did. Um, of course, you can check out cpcnightlynews.com. I did an awards section from the Nightly News, and we also uh, talked a little bit more about that ESAC championship, so you can check all that out as well. Well, Casey, I wanted to go to the Activities and Athletics Banquet. This is something that we do every year, not only to recognize our wonderful student organizations and clubs, but to recognize our athletes. And so this was always sort of a bittersweet evening. First of all, let's talk about that keynote speaker, because he might have <laughs> been one of the best speakers that I have not even ever seen at activities and athletics 
I'm talking ever. Yeah. Yeah, Chris Chris Franklin uh, from the Harlem Globetrotters, he is actually a, a longtime friend of mine. I We know each other from the basketball world. When I was in college, I used to volunteer at his youth camp. So um, I used my, hey, I helped you out for many years. Can you help me out? Um, I, I knew this was going to be a, a big uh, banquet. Um, and if you guys were there, you saw the numbers. I mean, this was the largest athletics and activities banquet that we've hosted on campus. We had over 200 people registered, um, which is more than increased double. Uh, from last year. So Chris was a really important get for me this year. And he was electric. I mean, he is a Harrisburg native from this area um, and is a great example as to how if you are willing to put in the work, you genuinely can make your dreams come true. It, it You don't necessarily, people aren't going to look at you and say he or she deserves to be there. You have to go get it. Um, and that was his message. And he, he brought his ball along and he did his tricks in front of everybody. And he it was just the delivery and his energy was really contagious. And um, I'm really, really grateful. And the, the most special piece about him, Paul, is... You know, people don't realize how much financially it costs to have guest speakers and keynote speakers at these events. And uh, Chris Franklin did this for free. That's amazing. You know, his goal was to motivate the next generation. It, it's remarkable. You couldn't have left that room without being motivated. No, no, I mean, not I, at all. There's no, there's honestly no way that anyone left that experience mm-hmm. not like, what am I doing? Like, well, right. even if I'm doing <laughs> a lot, I need to do more because he's set the tone for us. You know, and Abby, I think. Not only were we excited to win the Club School Spirit Award, which I thought was unbelievably important, uh, but Abby, you know, just to see all of these folks that you have had such an impact with, uh, not only just with basketball, but you also worked with soccer. You also work with men's and women's basketball, and you also work with baseball. You've basically, I don't want to say grew, grew up, but you certainly over the last couple of years have been there in the trenches. What did it mean to you to get to see these people be acknowledged for all of their hard work? I think it's great to see because I think sometimes at this level, sometimes it can be overlooked by others. But I think no matter what, you're out here and you're giving your best and you're achieving great things. I mean, men's soccer achieved you know a great record. They Men's baseball is achieving great things. Women's soccer, I mean, I don't think... Even just to be out there this year was an achievement. To be out there and I think you know Coach G does a great job of motivating people and even just being... Like the photographer, Coach G checks on me every time he sees me. Mm. So I think just seeing those people that honestly come together here as a community and are able to work together and build with the small population that we do have, I think it's amazing and I think it's it's fantastic. But again, I don't think any of that would be possible without Casey. Casey won an award uh, yes. at the Activities and Athletic ban- Banquet for being the, was it the awesomest? Awesome is athletic director of the year. Award. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, and you know, I know that y- you are the athletic director, and of mm-hmm. course, Kenton, Kenton is there to assist. But mm-hmm. you know, just to have that moment where it it's on you, mm-hmm. you know, the the thanks is on you. It goes to show that everything that you do is respected, appreciated, and that you you know all of your efforts do not go unnoticed. Even though, you know, we can always tell you how important you are. You know, we can thank you for how important you are. But something like that just goes a long way because you can have that on your desk and you can look at that every day and remember. You know, for me, as I think back, probably the most proud moment of my entire career was back in 2020 when I won the Faculty Member of the Year Award. Mm-hmm. And uh, while I did not get to accept that at graduation, because Mm -hmm. unfortunately we didn't have a graduation this year, of course, the time I win is the one time (laughs) we don't have a graduation, um, I have that on my desk. And I look at that every day, and any time I'm feeling down, or I'm feeling upset, or maybe even disappointed in a student, I just look at that and I tell myself, like, there was a reason that you won this. Mm -hmm. And if you can keep focused on your goals, you know, you, you're not going to get down and out about little things that happen here and there, maybe small disappointments or, or things that come up that, mm-hmm. you know, you don't anticipate. Mm-hmm. And so that, to me, is why it is so important for us to be recognized and why it's so important for us to recognize. Speaking of which, one of the people that obviously I would like to recognize is the nightly news player of the year. That's Andrew Hunter. Um, of course, this 
does not take anything away from all of the recipients of all of the different awards. Mm -hmm. But I did want to give a special shout out to Andrew because he was our not only our vice president, he was our first ever nightly news sports reporter. Mm -hmm. He was so active in obviously he was on the field for soccer, but played um, a major role in our basketball coverage. Game day coverage for you, mm -hmm. same thing with baseball. I mean, even after Andrew graduated, he was still on the field. He was still mm -hmm. bringing me the, the lineup cards. Yep. Like, yep. we couldn't have done it without him. Yeah. And that just goes to show he made such a dramatic impact in terms of a leadership from the team perspective. Mm -hmm. And again, he was one of the leaders of our sports committee that really drove some of these frankly, major improvements that we've been able to do with our broadcast over the past couple of years. And I just want to end with this. I cannot tell you, Casey, how many people came up to me either at the ESAC championship game or at the activities and athletics banquet parents who were just talking to me like I was their best friend and I'd never met them before. <laughs> and they're like, oh, hey, Paul, how's it going? I'm like, and you are, <laughs> you know? And yeah. of course, they were people's parents who were fans of uh -huh. our broadcast. And in fact, Owen Zell's mom came up to me and she's like, you know, I, I didn't know what you look like because usually mm -hmm. because of our camera setup, I don't get on air. They're like, as soon as you talked, I knew exactly <laughs> who you were. And, and that just means so much. And in fact, uh, Casey, we just released today. Uh, I got monthly from YouTube, we get little you know updates whatever we got this really really i'm sure automated email mm -hmm. from youtube that said we set records now remember we have been around since 2015 nine mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. we set records in a month for new subscribers number of views and total minutes spent watching and of course that mainly is contributed to, uh, from the esac championship game which was very, nearing a thousand views that's crazy. i might crazy. add that's awesome but uh that that is something that's really important it just goes to show that if you just keep making small mm -hmm. gains what can ultimately happen i mean i remember our one of our first broadcasts i'm like this is awful <laughs> and now i watch back the esac championship game i'm like this is legitimately unbelievably good it's phenomenal yeah I, and there, there's nothing like it at our level um trust me i watch others yeah I no there, there's nothing like it at our level you guys have elevated the broadcasting and um live streaming to just levels that are ncaa d2 d1 yeah. d3 levels i think um sorry abby go ahead no go ahead uh, but i i wanted to comment real quick paul because you know people are starting to recognize your voice and I, it's like we have our own little um like campus community celebrity here. You're you're the official <laughs> voice of the night. It's like, you know, when you hear somebody on the radio all the time and right. then you see them at like an event and you know the voice, that's, like, that's, that's going to be Paul around campus right. because you do do such an awesome job. And I know you always give so much credit to the students because you rely on them a lot, just like I do in athletics. So they are immeasurable to the process. But you are their leader and the, and the amount of growth that, that we've seen with the nightly news is just phenomenal. And that's a shout out to you and your accomplishment and the students that have been willing to invest in you and your dreams. So Thank you. people like Abby make it easy and, and we're lucky <laughs> to have students like her, but Andrew is also phenomenal. Yes. He got, you know, the nightly news athlete of the year award. I also gave out the first ever central Penn athletic staff member of the year award, which hands down had to go to Andrew. I mean, he just goes above and beyond and he's, he's special and always positive. All Even the if time. he's having a bad day. Yeah. yeah. And which is something I, a quality I wish I had. Yeah. No, <laughs> you know? he's, yeah. He's special. He, he just uplifts everybody around him, which, is, which is great. Definitely. I think uh, to your point, Professor Miller, I think, cause it's funny because I get to kind of get to know some of the parents without really actually ever meeting their child mm -hmm. because there's, you know, so many baseball players or mm -hmm. so many basketball players, but they know me cause I go down on the field and I do the post game. So it's funny to like kind of get to know them and they're like, Oh, what are we talking about today? <laughs> like, is it my kid today? And I was like, I don't know. That's funny. Yeah. Well, what a year in Knights Athletics. It's been one for the ages. Uh, but again, this is sort of that time of the year where we turn the page from one season to the next. Mm -hmm. um, one of the big things that you have coming up are some summer camps. This is one of the first times that you've ever had summer, a variety of summer camps across all different types of sports. Mm -hmm. So you do you want to share with us a little bit more about that and, and what people can expect and, and how people can inquire about more information? Yeah, we. Uh, so for the small break that we do have in between games of course we're going to fill it up with tons of work um, but it, it's to increase community service and uh, give back to the youth it's also a fundraiser for athletics and our sports teams um, so it's all good intentions behind it um, we are running the month of june we will have a youth uh, boys and girls basketball camp 
uh, ran separately by our coaching staff. So our boys camp is actually coming up. We're partnering with East Pennsboro Township on these camps. Boys basketball will be June 18th and uh, girls basketball will be June 21st. So those are right around the right around the corner. Easiest way to get involved, it is on the athletics website or you can email me directly at caseyhicks at centralpen.edu. And I'll put some links up along with that as well that so would people be great. can find some more details. Yeah. And one more thing that I wanted to talk about, this is a little bit more pressing. Uh, June 13th is going to be a big day for our baseball team. Not only is there going to be a recognition ceremony uh, June 13th at noon on the ATEC patio that's free food and it's going to be open to the campus community, um, there's also the inaugural Angel Mercado Wiffle Ball Tournament. That's so tell right. us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so you know it's been uh, a little over a year since Angel's passing. You wanna you wanna point that out too as ESAC champions. You know all of that was such a big accomplishment for this team specifically because of how hard of a situation they went through in losing their brother just a year ago. Um, so I know that ESAC championship meant so much to that team and to the coaches. A year ago when we were going through this, um, this the students would come talk to me a little bit about memories of Angel just to help with the grief and, and coping. Um, and so many of them mentioned playing wiffle ball, wiffle ball, wiffle ball. Um, and the baseball team, um, a couple of Angel's closest friends had come to me and said, you know, Casey, we really want to run a memorial uh, wiffle ball tournament for Angel. Um, so this is our first year that we're diving in. Um, a little bit a, a year past his death just to honor him and keep his name alive on our campus. Um, so next Thursday, June 13th, we'll be running that first um, inaugural Angel Memorial Wiffle Ball Tournament with the intention of running it every single year around this time as soon as that baseball season comes to a close. We're going to bring back Angel's name every year. Um, we're getting a big trophy made, um, and we'll swap out the winner every year, be able to you know have some fun. We'll have – um, some snacks out there and play five on five with football um, in a single elimination tournament style. So uh, faculty and staff and students are all getting involved. So it's a good way to bring that engagement between everybody on campus. And I'm looking forward to it. I have a team in it. So I'm anticipating <laughs> our names being on the trophy for this first year. But, you know, you never know. Underdogs can win sometimes, too. Can I say sh I was also there for the kickball game. And Casey also predicted the faculty to win that one. <laughs> and I won't tell you the score. Let's cut, they let's did cut not off win. her mic. <laughs> they did not win. I'm just saying. Well, Casey, I, I must say that there's no question that without you, our athletic department would not be in anywhere near the wonderful condition and shape that it is. And not only that, I am just so honored that and I can't say this enough. I know I probably end every single podcast with you with mm. this line, but mm. it's it's just my dream to do this. And I know that it's but just a very small part of my job, mm -hmm. but it's part of the job that I can look back on with just such immense pride mm -hmm. that not only we've been able to make a significant growth, but that also we are providing an opportunity for people like Abby, for people like mm -hmm. Andrew, Kevon, Dalton, Blake, that have had such a strong desire to work in sports, giving them a platform to kind of get their foot in a door yeah. working in this area and you know abby's now a, a, an employee of the harrisburg senators yes. and and hopes to continue her mm -hmm. career in sports and i just think it's absolutely wonderful that this opportunity has presented itself and you know we're running the sports broadcast class again next we're actually going to try it in the winter next term so we get a little bit of basketball and baseball yes. um, so we're going to try something a little different next year but again just trying to inspire that next line of, of folks to to keep doing what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, I think it's awesome. This this is needed on any level. Everybody always thinks, you know, professional dreams and this and that. Um, but you look at Central Penn and think about the rewards you get from a, even at this level. It's special. And, and you create these these memories for these students for a lifetime. So I'm, I'm forever grateful for you. It's my dream to work in athletics, too. The administrative side, some days I could do without. But being at those games and celebrating those wins alongside all of our students and the relationships that we build, it's special. And I'm happy that we can live out this dream together. 100%. Yeah. Well, Casey, I'll tell you, we didn't get a chance to take a look at that soccer and basketball season coming up. But I'll tell you what, we will have you back again next term that we can take a look at what's coming up for soccer and basketball once we get a little further down the road. That sounds great. We have some exciting stuff for soccer we're anticipating some more ESAC championships coming our way. So we'll we'll predict that on our next episode. Fantastic. And Abby, uh, I know you only have one more term here, but trust me, I already have a podcast set aside to have you back on next term so we can sort of reflect about your time, not only just with athletics, but with the school in general. So we will have you on for at least one more podcast 
before you ride off into the sunset. I'm so excited. I'm a little nervous that it's the last one. I don't know that we should have brought that up already. I don't <laughs> think I'm ready for that, but no. Well, there's never a last one. I always say the last one as a student because right. you also have to remember, you know, someday when you get in, uh, inducted into the Nightly News Hall of Fame, of course, we'll have you back on the podcast then too. Of course. That's right. And you might be coming and, back to a more photography, so you're not going anywhere. Hey, Casey told me I'm not leaving, so Dylan's, that's right. Dylan still hangs around. Right, so. That is true. <laughs> that is true. And Andrew's the same way. He'll be right. back for soccer season. I'm having him on the sidelines there, too. So the students that work hard and deserve the, the opportunity, we don't, we don't let you guys we go anywhere. Leave. Yeah, Nor you, should we. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you so much to Athletic Director Casey Hicks and Nightly News President Abby Bresky for joining us on this podcast today. Uh, both of you, again, thank you so much for your time today, but also your efforts during during these seasons. So again, Casey, thank you for being here. I appreciate both of you. Thank you, Abby, for all you've done the past year and a half for athletics and moving forward. And Paul, you know how I feel about you. You're special. You help elevate my job. You make me look good. Um, and (laughs) and I'm grateful. Yeah. And Abby, thank you so much for your time today and everything you do for the nightly news. Well, thank you for having me here with the nightly news. I've, I've enjoyed my time so far and I'm, I'm excited to see what next term brings. And for Casey, I'm so glad that I'm a part of athletics and I get to do everything that I do. So I appreciate you both. Awesome. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Nightly News Podcast. For the Athletic Director, Casey Hicks, and for Nightly News President, Abby Brusky, this is Professor Paul Miller. And we'll see you again next time on the Nightly News Podcast. This is Andrew Hunter, Nightly News Sports Reporter, and you're listening to the Nightly News Podcast. This is Nightly News correspondent Noah Lopez with the spring 2024 episode of the Nightly News Brief. This news podcast features audio versions of stories from our student reporters, articles by Blake Myers, Tam Bowie, Brett Savleski, Nick Hogan, and Professor Paul Miller are featured in today's episode. Andrew Hunter took home some hardware recently, as he was selected as the Nightly News Player of the Year at the Activities and Athletics Banquet, held in the Central Penn Conference Center on May 23rd. Due to the Nightly News working very closely with Central Penn Knights Athletics, the club developed this award to recognize a student athlete who excels in three key areas. These areas represent work on the quarter field, accolades in the classroom, and willingness to provide access or assistance to student and faculty reporters. Hunter is the fifth student athlete and the first Knights men's soccer player to take home the honor. In previous years, Connor Graham in 2019, Jalen Burton-Jones in 2020, Sidney Bubb in 2022, and Nate John Philippe in 2023 have collected the award. There was no award winner in 2021 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Hunter was stellar for the Knights over the last two seasons. He appeared in 29 games throughout his Central Penn career, leading the Knights to a 12-4-1 record and an Eastern States Athletics Conference Championship berth in 2023. Hunter also managed to rack up 164 total saves through his two seasons as the Knights' goalkeeper and was an anchor in Central Penn's run of recent success. Hunter was also an outstanding student, earning various awards for his in-classroom achievements. Hunter received a 2023 United States Collegiate Athletic Association Academic All-American designation and made the Dean's List several times. In addition, he was also a student worker in the athletic department, where Hunter would work alongside the baseball team and basketball teams, helping keep score for basketball, working game day operations for baseball, and writing game recap stories for the nightly news. While involved as a student athlete and student worker, he also rose to serve as the Nightly News Media Club's vice president. During his time with the club, Hunter was also named the first Nightly News sports reporter and led the sports subcommittee for the group, working with a team to help improve sports broadcasts. After receiving the award, Hunter said, quote, I am very thankful for everything that has come my way, especially the opportunities that have presented themselves to me, end quote. He understands and exemplifies what it means to be a Central Penn Knight, on and off the field. While Hunter has graduated and walked the stage to receive his diploma, he still works for the school in the athletic department. Beyond that, he seeks a fresh path and a new journey, and new experiences to conquer. 
Steve Hassinger, Director of Central Penn Center for Career Services and Development, and Paul Miller, Assistant Professor of Communications, each won an award at this week's Pennsylvania Association of Colleges and Employers Annual Conference. On the conference's final day, several awards were given to recognize important and influential individuals within the organization. Hassinger took home the Donna Delter Service Award. The award is presented by the executive board who have provided outstanding service to the association. The Donna Dentler Service Award was created in 1991 to recognize the outstanding organizational and professional services of a PACCS member. The first award was received by Donna Dentler of Messiah University. Miller received the Penn Ace Excellence Award, established in 2022, to recognize the contributions of members to better the career development and employer relationships of their students, alumni, and employees. Any Penace member can nominate another for recognition for work at their company slash institution, for the career development and recruitment fields, or for Penace itself. This year's Penace conference theme was doing better with less, meant to highlight strategies that allow career services offices to focus on efficiency during the troubling financial times in higher education that have struck the industry post-COVID. During the conference, Hassinger and Miller, along with internship coordinator Kristen Fike, offered a presentation entitled, Doing Better with Less, Developing a Social Media Strategy for Career Services. The presentation offered career services professionals without marketing backgrounds actionable guidelines to create and implement a social media strategy for their offices. The annual Penace Conference was held in Hershey, from May 21st through the 23rd. The 2025 conference will be held at Toft Trees Resort in State College next May. The Central Penn Chapter of Gamma Beta Phi is looking for its newest members. The Honor Society, for people who may be unfamiliar with it, is dedicated to community service. Gamma Beta Phi is a club at Central Penn. Its members value hard work, commitment, and dedication in opportunities that allow them to volunteer and help people in the community. The organization is one of 130 chapters of the National Office. Assistant Professor of Humanities Amanda Stuckey advises the Central Penn Chapter. According to Stuckey, the CPC Chapter members uphold the National Society's core pillars of scholarship, service, and character, and this is shown through membership application requirements. Stuckey said members are invited based on GPA, which must be at least 3.0. To remain an active member, students must log at least seven hours of community service each term. Stuckey added that members have an opportunity for a $1,500 scholarship each year from the national office. Club member Gabrielle Bresky said chapter members can help others around them and allow college students to understand one another's needs. She said that helping others has been one of her biggest passions and noted how she organized a night in the multi-purpose room on campus to decorate cards for people living in an assisted living home. Another notable recent club project was the Food Drive, organized during the winter term, themed around the Super Bowl. Donations came from across the community for the Central Penn Food Pantry, which helps any students in need of food or other personal necessities. Stuckey and Bresky explained that student members have opportunities to voice their ideas for the organization, including which Central Penn community members will speak during chapter meetings. Stuckey said she loves hearing from new members who get invited and loves seeing what projects they create that bring the community together. Stuckey noted, quote, Joining Gamma Beta Phi is exactly what you make of it, end quote. West Shore Connect and Central Penn College are seeking student mentors to assist individuals enrolled in the program due to their continued growth. The program is a partnership between the West Shore School District and Central Penn College that works with students with disabilities. Its goal is to promote independence in everyday activities and allow students to network and establish relationships. Positions will begin in the fall term. In addition to classwork, students in the West Shore Connect program can obtain student worker positions, 
receive transition assistance from the college's career services team, and participate in any activities that are available to Central Penn students in Somerdale. The partnership began in 2021 and has seen around a dozen students utilize it. To ensure its future success, West Shore Connect needs mentors to assist the students who participate. The responsibilities of mentors include helping students with homework, assisting them with going to class, helping them keep their suite on campus clean, taking them to on-campus and off-campus activities, and providing them a strong role model to look up to. The program has many benefits for mentors. Not only does it offer a flexible schedule, but it also provides a meaningful experience to put on a resume while giving students the opportunity to give back to the college and community. Students interested in becoming a mentor can contact Sherry Brenizer at sherrybrenizer at centralpen.edu. The CPC film series returned to the Capitol Blue Cross Theater for its quarterly event in May, this time offering nightly news reporter Nick Hogan the opportunity to present one of his favorite films, 1986's Labyrinth. Hogan, the CPC film series correspondent, since February 2023, finally had his time to shine on the event stage. In a recent nightly news podcast about the event, Hogan shared why he selected this picture, mainly centering on the nostalgia he feels toward the Jim Henson film. Henson, of Muppet fame, had a $25 million budget for the film and an iconic star of the 1980s, David Bowie. But, much to the dismay of Henson and the film's executive producer, George Lucas, the film did very poorly at the box office, bringing in under $15 million worldwide that summer. Still, when thinking about the film today, it is easy to associate memories with the film due to its cult status. In fact, the film is still in regular rotation on cable and premium movie channels and still resonates with popular culture nearly 40 years after its release. Part of the love of the film, from the perspective of Hogan, was how it illustrated a different side of Henson's work. The film itself was Henson's final feature film, and Hogan argues, quote, It works as a cornerstone to the 1980s dark fantasy trend and shows a more mature side of Henson's puppetry expertise, end quote. In addition, Hogan talked about the mastery of effects in the film, noting how most modern films rely on CGI to create effects. Labyrinth illustrated practical effects, or techniques, where scenes are created physically on set, using methods such as animatronics, scale models, makeup, and controlled explosions, instead of digital or computer-generated imagery. Hogan claimed, quote, This film isn't what it is without Henson's incredible work of practical effects. Henson's work heavily contributes to the charm it maintains nearly four decades later, end quote. In hindsight, it is truly a wonder that the viewing public was able to see work from two of the most creative geniuses the film industry has ever known in Henson and Lucas. Responsible for many of our childhood and adulthood memories, these two men helped create some of the most iconic characters in television and film history. From Big Bird to C-3PO and everything in between, this film gave us an opportunity to see something unique that could never be duplicated. Hogan, who has been critical of the film industry post-COVID in his reviews for the Nightly News, left an important point at the end of his presentation. He said, quote, To me, this film stands out as a gem in an often repetitive and stale industry. End quote. Which, in a way, speaks to why this film has been able to withstand the test of time. Because of its unique storyline, iconic star, and geniuses behind the camera, this film is what the movie industry is all about. And even though the film was not successful at the box office, it ultimately left a lasting impression on viewers and the industry alike. This has been Noah Lopez with the Spring 2024 episode of the Nightly News Brief. <laughs>